Hello, squad fam. So today for Sinister Sunday, we're going to do something a little different. I saw this place actually in New York, which I'm in New York, um, that I never heard of before. And I'm quite interested to find out the history. And then just maybe we could go there one day, which would be really exciting to have a place that we did on Sinister Sunday that we could actually go to. So today we are going to, if you can tell by my background, a restaurant in New York City. And it's called One If By Land, Two If By Sea. So let's get right into it, guys. Okay, squad fam. So one if by land, two if by sea is an elegant restaurant located in the heart of the West Village, long recognized for its classic menu and beautiful decor. But behind its handsome veneer lurks a dark past. Prostitution, mysterious disappearances, and gruesome deaths are among the nasty things that are tied to its history. Mm. In fact, a total of 20 ghosts are believed to haunt the bistro. Oh yeah, we have to go there. And these spirits are less than friendly towards diners and staff. One maitre d', for instance, resigned after he was shoved up the stairs and down the stairs every night by invisible hands. So if you prefer Wellington Burger, with a side of polka dice, a meal at this restaurant is sure to satisfy. Well, yeah, that's the place I want to go eat. <laughs> One if by land, two if by sea started out as a carriage house, and it was built in 1767. Sorry, squad fam, I have to stop for a second. So the next clip, you're going to hear some disturbance with my mic, but as you see, I haven't moved my mic. You could see I'm going to circle it is totally fine. So I don't know what went on here. It's actually quite scary. During the 1700s, the adults during the 1700s, Theodosa. Burr's wife, Theodosa, had previously died due to long standing health problems, leaving the widow Burr to raise their child. Theod Theodosa. What a name. Thus became the light of his life. He considered her well-being an utmost priority and spent much of his time with her. However, terrible rumors began to spread around the city regarding the intimacy of their relationship. In fact, many claimed that the famous duel between Burr and Alexandra Hamilton started because of such gossip. Mm. Both men had been defaming each other characters for several years but comments questions his closeness with his daughter seemed to especially infuriate Burr. Thus on July 11th 1804 he and Hamilton arranged to meet outside Weehawken, New Jersey to engage in a shoot-off. The historic Burr-Hamilton duel re resulted in Hamilton's death as well as Burr's political downfall. Much of his property, included his, including his beloved carriage house, was taken away from him. Once taken out of Burr's hand, the structure became an engine house for the, including his beloved carriage house, was taken away from him. Once taken out of Burr's hand, the structure became an engine house for the fire station located next door. Okay, so already a fun history. 
Greenwich, which quickly transformed from a slum to an up and coming neighborhood. Thus, the city sold the carriage house in the late 1890s and its new owner transformed it into a brothel and saloon. Its discreet location made it a perfect place for nocturnal New Yorkers to engage in some mischief. This building itself had secretive features, including a hidden stone lined passageway that ran to what was once the shore of the Hudson River. Hmm. Some believe that it was used to sneak in illegal goods or, rev or revolutionary war soldiers. It could have also served as an underground railroad for run runaway slaves. Wow. Around 1910, 17 Barrow Street became a silent movie house. Finally, in 1973, it opened as a restaurant and earned its current title, which stems from a quote found in Henry W. Longfellow's famous poem, Paul Revere's Ride. That's what the name of the poem was. One if by land and two if by sea was a secret signal used to alert patriots about the route the British troops chose to advance to Concord. Oh, the owner of one if by land, two if by sea, kept much of the carriage house's original elements well intact, including handmade horseshoes, antique bottles, and a hitching post. Of course, modern furnishings were added. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't say that. Including fireplaces, a wine cellar, and a baby grand piano, such that the building was transformed into a true romantic restaurant. Ghosts included. <laughs> Thanks to the exceptional cuisine and romantic setting, one if by land, two if by sea, quickly became a go to for diners in the city. Today you have your pick of menu options, including a chef. A chef's tasting, a jazz brunch, and other. Stop by to enjoy classics, including beef wellington and chicken. I don't know what the heck that word is. But you can have chicken or beef. I don't eat either. Or to sample the restaurant specialties, such as hand-shaped Parmesan ganache. Now, if there's no meat, I will be eating that. Its private garden is also the ideal place to host parties and celebrate. In fact, more people are said to have announced their engagements there than any other restaurant in Manhattan. Oh, and they have a picture of the hand-shaped ganache. Very good. I don't know. I don't see. Do I see meat on that? They might have put. Oh, no, it's mushroom. Okay. You're okay with mushroom. <laughs> But no one ever dines alone at one if by land, two if by sea. Many who have sat at this romantic hideaway's candlelit tables have experienced some sort of paranormal activity. Staff members and diners alike have reported strange incidents, including flickering lights, patrons being shoved by spirits, nice, and the earrings of a woman sitting at the bar kept disappearing. Pictures and paintings also often vanish or fall off the restaurant walls for no reason. Where are they taking the painting? The, sp what, the spirits are taking the paintings? Really, what are they doing with it? They got a thief there. Blaming the damn ghosts for shit that they didn't even do. <laughs> yep, that's what's going on there. Okay, the ghost of Burr's daughter, Theodosa, is among its spectral tenants. In her adult life, Theodosa lived in Shalton, South Carolina, along one of her journeys to visit her father in New York City, a boat, a creature,
and the case was infested with rust. Many believe that this year had been stormed by pirates, perhaps the Bloodbays or the Carolina Bankers. In Theodosa Burr's Austin's Portrait of a Prodigy, Richard Coate writes, according to the colonial Dane's description of the Patriots' last day, it was allegedly intercepted by a intercepted by La Vargance, captain by a bloodthirsty pirate. Other spirits, including Aaron Burr, insist that ships vanishing had nothing to do with buccaneers. Instead, it was merely sunk to the severe storm. But Theodosa's disappearance in 1813 went unexplained, leaving her father feeling as if he'd been severed from the human race. Although he remarried again in 1833 to a wealthy widow named Eliza Jumlo, he never was able to fill the hole left by Theodosa. Indeed, after his duel with Hamilton, Burr's luck and power seemed to run out and him and Eliza separated after merely four months of marriage, and then he was hit by a debilitating stroke in 1834. Burr passed away in Staten Island boarding house in 1836. He could now be reunited with his beloved daughter. The two are often spotted at one if by land, two if by sea in the restaurant's mezzanine. Okay. The ghosts of Burr and Theodosa both like to make their presence known at the restaurant. Burr's ghost is said to throw and break plates, while Theodosa is rumored to enjoy swiping earrings from unsuspected female diners. Guests have also seen her walking up and down the restaurant stairs. Oh, maybe she was the one pushing the maitre d'. <laughs> but Burr and his daughter aren't the only ones inhabiting the 200-year-old building. A woman dressed entirely in black often descends the staircase before disappearing in thin air. A paranormal investigator confirmed that this is an apparition of a woman who tripped over her dress and fallen down the stairwell, breaking her neck. Oh, you must have a spare box. Other ghosts include a flow Zethel's Polly's girl, a blacksmith. There's a dancer that haunts the restaurant's constitution room, the blacksmith. The stairways of upper stories of the building where he lived and was seen by a retired staff member many years ago. Hmm. So whether you're planning to pop the question or looking to share a mural with the spirits, stop by one if by land, two if by sea. No other restaurant in the city is both haunted and triple A four star diamond rating. You just might find yourself face to face with an apparition of one of the most famous political figures in history. Wow. Well, alrighty then. I'm going to show you some pictures. I'm going to see if I can find any with ghosts in them. Who knows? All this stuff is happening. Some must must have a picture somewhere. So I will check it out, guys.
sorry, Squad Fam. I was actually taping a cooking with Chris. So I was tasting what I made. It was all ready. So anyway, check that out. That came out really good. That uh, will probably be out either before or after this video. I don't know yet. But <laughs> um, they're like chocolate chip cookie bars. Yes. But in like a cake form. It's very good. I don't know what you want to call it. We're going to think of a good name. But anyway. Thanks for watching this episode of Sinister Sunday. And uh, like, subscribe, leave me a comment. And we'll see you on the next adventure.